So now being talked about the conventional method of detailing any part, this is the same part detailed using geometric dimensioning and tolerancing principles and methods. I'll take you through the part. We have been discussing about the thickness of the part, wherein we have given a tolerance. We have also constrained the geometry of the thickness or the surface straightness and the flatness of the surface. And we are depicting this surface as one of the main datum. And then comes datum B and then comes datum C. And then if you see here clearly, what we are trying to do is we are trying to dimension tolerance the geometry here the axis of the hole and again this axis of the hole is specified with respect to three datums and the datum priority starts with a followed by b and then with c this is just one example of future control frame this this frame we called a future control frame wherein we are trying to control the future and any future control frame you have to read from left to right try to read this particular future control frame wherein we are trying to position the axis of the cylindrical hole within a cylindrical dimension of 0.7 mm at maximum material condition and with respect to datum a b and c so this being the primary datum b is the secondary datum and c is your tertiary datum if you use such method we can think about the same example that we were discussing in the last slide i'll just touch upon the inspection point alone where you can see in this future control frame for inspecting this particular hole we are saying the primary datum to be considered for this hole should be in all cases the datum a that is this particular surface what we are trying to say is you should always rest this future first in your inspection so now we are clearing out the ambiguity in inspection you should not use any other surface to rest the part for inspection purpose. You should always use your datum future A. After resting your datum future A, you have to use datum B as your secondary datum. By secondary datum, what we mean is you should always use this surface for constraining other available degrees of freedom, followed by datum C, which will constrain any other available degrees of freedom. So what we are trying to do here is to communicate what is the method that you should use for inspecting this part. So any quality inspection personnel down the line, if he understands the DGDNT, if he knows the rules and principles that has to be used in reading and inspecting a GDNT dimensioned part, will adhere to the rules and there are no chances of miscommunication. And with, with this method, you can end up in always confirming that your design intent is captured clearly and the final product you get out of the manufacturing and inspection line is in line with your design intent and it always meets your functional requirement and it always has no chance of errors we have till now talked about only one benefit of gdnt the inspection part of it there are so many benefits associated with it but i appreciate if you could think this point and if you could understand this point clearly, you can see the whole importance of GDNT. Again, stressing to it, this is a language for communicating your design intent through all the downstream activities, starting from design through manufacturing inspection. And there are different personnels available across different, different industries. Some might be well-versed in reading the drawing. Some might be well-versed in defining the drawing. And some might be well-versed in recommending the dimension what the future should be used what geometric control should be used there are there might be different personnel across different industries but always bear in mind this particular skill of reading a drawing developed using gdnt that follows any of the standard asma or iso requires time and also personnels in any engineering industry must have a basic understanding of gdnt only because this is the worldwide system and if you see I have listed on all the personnel who should have a basic understanding of GDNT from engineering design drafting tool making manufacturing inspection personalities the procurement and quality personnel and the CNC personnel all these person should have a basic understanding of GDNT so that you will understand what is the intent of the part what is the designers intent 
and how to validate how to manufacture all those things you can only understand if you can read and comprehend the gdnt details given in, a, in any engineering drawing understanding digesting and expertizing yourself in gdnt can give you many career paths and opportunities starting from design engineer wherein you will design a particular part understanding the functional functional requirements and communicating those functional requirements th through your gdnt symbols in the drawing and then comes a dimensional engineer in the chain wherein he will use the gdnt information available in the drawing and he will see that all the given dimension and all the tolerances given for a individual part ends up meeting the design functional and appearance requirements and that is the role of a dimensional engineer then comes the dimensional inspector wherein in real case he will check the parts in line and confirms that the part meets the design engineering drawing apart from it you also have other supporting roles like drawing checker drafter wherein a drawing checker role is to read the drawing completely to understand all the different terminologies and symbols used and to make sure the drawing is complete and the design manufacture part who meet the functional requirement a drafter again is responsible for drafting the given part and functional requirements and the design enge engineers direction so these career path and job opportunities you see is going to be an evergreen field forever there is production until there is manufacturing until there is design of new parts new products these fields are going to be evergreen field and the demand for these fields are increasing year by year i have not shown any figures here but you yourself can go and check in glassdoor and other websites wherein you can see the salary and the demand available for different gdnt personnel nevertheless these are not the only professions who should be knowing about gdnt but also there should be other persons across different engineering departments who should also have a basic understanding of gdnt so as to deliver the responsibility